everyone, I'm Miss Kristen and I'm a children's librarian at Dorchester Road Regional Library. This weekend is the Southeastern Wildlife Expo. To celebrate, we'll be learning all about birds. I'll be sharing some cool bird books and bird facts. We'll make a bird feeder that you can put out near your own home. And I'll tell you all about a cool birding program you can do from home. So to start us off, I will be reading How to Find a Bird. It's written by Jennifer Ward and illustrated by Diana Sudika. This is read with permission from Simon & Schuster. There are a lot of ways to find a bird. There's, that's the wonderful thing about birds. To find a bird, first you'll want to blend in and move slowly. Quiet is good too. So quiet, you can hear your heartbeat. Shh. Don't just look up to find a bird. Look down, low to the ground where some birds forage, seeking things hiding in the earth. Look down, where some birds sneak snacks. Look down, where some birds splash. If you take a walk, watch your step. Some birds nest on the ground. So don't just look up to find a bird. Sometimes you can find the bird by looking straight ahead. You will have to have a sharp eye, sharp as an eagle's eye. Can you find the birds in the tree? Birds are the cleverest blenders of all. At first, you may not see them, but if you wait, if you are still, and if you are quiet, you'll see. You are just as clever as a bird. Of course, you can always look up to find a bird too. You can look up high in the sky where birds fly. Sometimes when you look up, you'll find birds simply sitting. If you could perch high in the sky, what might you see? If you want to find a bird, don't be tricked. Some birds are stealthy. There it is. Wait a minute, where'd it go? Was that even a bird? Sometimes you don't need to find a bird. It will find you. Hello, bluebird. Some birds will announce their presence when they are near or announce your presence when they see you. And if you feed them, they will come. Then all you need is a window to find a bird. Some birds can't be found at all unless you read about them. These birds are extinct, which means they no longer exist. But the best way to find a bird if you want to find one is to close your eyes. Did you hear that? Did you hear that bird? That's the wonderful thing about birds. The end. So if you want to check out this book, it has some great tips in the back about bird watching. So that is our first book for today. And next, I want to share some cool facts about bird nests with you. So this is a great book to learn about birds as well. It is called Nature All Around Birds by Pamela Hickman and Carolyn Gavin. So there are more than 9,000 species of birds in the world and around 650 species in North, um, that nest in North America, which means they build their nests uh, here in North America. Have you ever seen a bird's nest? What type of things did you find in it? And what was it made of? Where did you find it? 
and what did it look like? There are a lot of different ways for birds to build their nests. Here is a great page in this book about different types of nests. So there are some that build their nests in trees, which are probably ones that you've seen before, but there are also birds who nest on the ground, like the killdeers, that one right there. Um, there are some like the bald eagle that nests in the same place every year and it keeps building and building onto the same nest until it weighs half a ton or even more. Um, other bird nests can even be in tree holes, like these ones here. Um, birds can use a lot of different things to make their nests. Um, some of them use cobwebs. Uh, some of them use mud, snake skin, lichen, and even their own feathers. So there are a lot of different ways to build a nest and there are a lot of different places to find them. So when you're keeping an eye out for birds, make sure you're not just looking in trees. There are other places you can find them too. And if you decide that you like this book and you wanna check it out, there's also a really great section in the back about beginner bird watching. It gives you some tips. So next, I'm going to read another book and this one is called Mama Built a Little Nest. It's by Jennifer Ward and illustrated by Steve Jenkins. And this one is read with permission from Simon Schuster. Mama built a little nest inside a sturdy trunk. She used her beak to tap, 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 the perfect place to bunk. And this book has some really cool little facts in the bottom about the different bird nests we'll be reading about. Mama built a little nest, a cup so wee and snug, with walls of moss and roof of sky and silky cobweb rug. Mama built a little nest, well actually she didn't. She found one that another made and then she laid me in it. So some birds, birds actually use other birds' nests instead of building their own. Mama built a little nest, my daddy helped out too. They placed my egg upon his feet. That's where I hatched and grew. So the emperor penguin actually nests on top of their father's feet. Mama scrapped a simple nest upon a craggy ledge. She tucked me safe within her wings until my time to fledge. So these ones are on a cliff. Daddy built a little nest and then he built another and another and another, hoping to impress my mother. So this is a male cactus wren that builds nests in a cactus. Mama built a little nest she used her beak to sew. A woven nest of silky grass, the perfect place to grow. And that is a weaver bird. And they actually sew their nest with their beaks. Mama built a little nest by digging out a burrow. It was a hoot, our little home, a safe and feathery furrow. So those are burrowing owls and they nest in the ground. Mama built a little nest. She gathered twigs that float and placed them on the river to create a cozy boat. These are grebes that nest on top of the water. Mama built a little nest, she made it on the ground, a simple nest, not very soft, with pebbles smooth and round. So many shorebirds, like the one here, build their nest on the ground. And if you notice, with all the pebbles, you can't really tell which of these are rocks and which are eggs. 
So this nest helps them camouflage and protect their eggs from predators. Daddy built a little nest and now don't gross out with spit. Who would have thought that spit would make the perfect place to sit? So this is the swiftlet and it makes an edible nest using its own spit, which hardens in the air. Mama built a sealed nest within an old tree's hollow. My daddy left a little hole to pass her food to swallow. So this is a hornbill and it builds its nest in a tree hollow. And it stays, the mother bird stays in there with its chicks. Mama built a sturdy nest by stacking twigs up high, a breezy house upon a tree where talons blend with sky. So this is a bald eagle nest. Look how big that one is. Says they can be usually five to six feet wide and two to four feet high. It's a really big nest. Do you know what kind of bird this is? Mama built a little nest entirely out of mud. No feathery down, no soft green plants, just fuddy, muddy crud. That is a flamingo. You have a nest, your very own, a place to rest your head with pillows, soft and cozy thoughts. Your nest is called a bed. The end. So next, I want to show you some cool books if you want to learn more about bird beaks. So the cool thing about a bird's beak is you can learn a little bit about what and how it eats just by looking at the shape of its beak. So this book, um, Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species, adapted and illustrated by Sabina Rodeva, has a lot of different stuff in it, um, but the part I wanna show you is the stuff he learned about finches. So Darwin studied the finches that lived in the Galapagos Islands, and he learned that they had different beaks for different things. So that's his page here. So some of them had long and sharp beaks that they used to tear flowers, and others had pointed beaks, and they actually used sticks like tools to get to insects inside of trees. There were others that had large beaks so they could crush seeds. And there were some that had smaller beaks that ate softer seeds. And there's another book. If you're interested in looking for birds, this is a really good one to start with. It is the National Audubon Society First Field Guide for Birds. Um, it's really small, you can tell, so it's easy to carry around if you're walking around your neighborhood or maybe a park looking for birds. And this one shows all different kinds of bird beaks. So you can see how different beaks are on different birds. So the great blue heron right there is a water bird and its long beak is perfect for getting fish. This one has a fish in its mouth in the picture. It's long and spear-like, the beak, which can also sometimes be called a bill. There's also the red crossbill bird. You can see a little picture of it here. And its beak actually overlaps. The top and the bottom overlap like this. And the reason it overlaps like that is they use their beak to pry open pine cones to get to the seeds inside. I'm also gonna show you, I don't know that I have a picture of it, but there are some other cool birds that maybe you can look for pictures of yourself. Um, one of them is a really big bird. It doesn't live anywhere near us. It's actually from Africa and it is called a shoebill. It's a really big kind of strange looking bird and it has a huge beak that's shaped kind of like a shoe, which is where it gets its name. 
and it eats anything from fish to frogs to even baby crocodiles um, because it lives in swamps and those are the kind of animals that are nearby for it to eat. Uh, there's also a long-billed curlew, which I might have a picture of. So this is the long-billed curlew. And you see it's got a really long, thin beak, and it uses that beak to poke it, poke into sand and look for worms. So that's why its beak is so long and skinny. So you can learn a lot about birds just by looking at the shape and size of their beaks. You can kind of guess how and what they eat. So those are the books I'm reading aloud and kind of showing you pages from today. Uh, but I also want to talk to you about a really cool bird program that happens the same weekend as the Southeast Wildlife Expo. So the National Audubon Society has a program called the, Bra the Great Backyard Bird Count. And what it is is over the weekend, you go outside and you spend at least 15 minutes looking for birds. We're going to provide a link in the comments um, for the official website for the bird count so you can find out more. But there are apps that you can download to a phone or you can log on to a website. And by going outside for just 15 minutes to look for and listen for birds and make a count of the birds you see outside, you can help scientists track bird populations before their annual migration. So it's a really cool way to not just learn about the birds that live in your neighborhood, but to also help with bird research. And it only takes 15 minutes. There are some great apps on that website that can help you identify birds if you're not that familiar with the different ones that live in your area. Um, and it's just a good excuse to go outside and see some cool animals. So last, I'm going to recommend a few books for you if you just haven't had enough birds yet and you would like to learn more, here are three more books you can read. So this one is called What on Earth Birds? Explore, Create, and Investigate by Mike Unwin and Paul Morgan. And this one is really great, um, I would say for even just eight and up. It's not very text heavy for a nonfiction book. Um, you can kind of go page by page. It also has some really cool activities like making a bird bath, making bird feeders. Um, there are also even templates in the back that you can make copies of for different activities that are within the book. So this is a fun interactive way to learn more about birds. If you're interested in learning more cool bird facts. Um, the National Wildlife Federation's World of Birds, A Beginner's Guide by Kim Kirkey is another great book to get started with. Um, this one has very, very cool illustrations. Um, it's just really pretty to look at and it has some really cool information. And since it's broken up, by bird. You can do a couple pages at a time um, instead of reading, trying to read the whole thing in one sitting. They're also grouped up by different habitats, but this is another great way to learn more about birds. And the last book I'm recommending is called Bird Count. It is written by Susan Edwards Richmond and illustrated by Stephanie Pfizer Coleman. Um, and this is actually a picture book story about a family that goes out and does the Christmas bird count. So this is another um, activity that anyone can get involved in. Um, the Christmas bird count happens towards the end of the year. Um, and you can kind of keep track with them as you read through the book of the different birds that they've seen. 
So if you think bird counting is cool um, and you want to read a fictional story about a family that does it, um, this is a great one to read. So next we are going to do our craft. So for our craft, we're making a bird feeder and you will need three things to do this. Um, maybe four if you want to hang your bird feeder in a, tr in a tree somewhere. Um, but at the very least, you will need a toilet paper roll. Um, you can use a paper towel roll if that's what you have instead. Um, just something similar to that. You'll need peanut butter and you will need bird seed. So I'm going to get my supplies and then I will show you how to make that. So let me get my things and we'll make that together. Hi everyone. So I've moved to a table because this craft can get a little messy um, and I wanted to make sure I didn't make a mess all over my couch. So we're going to be making a bird feeder using a toilet paper roll. If you have a paper towel roll, that's okay too. Um, I have some peanut butter and then I have a bowl of bird seed. Um, you can put this on a plate too if that's easier. You just want a pile of bird seed on a surface where you can roll the toilet paper roll on it. So first we're just going to take our roll and I've got a knife to spread my peanut butter on and then I'm just going to put a coat all along the roll. And this will help our seed stick to our roll. Okay, so once you think you've got enough peanut butter on there, so you have a good solid layer, we're going to take it I'm gonna put it on the bird seed like this. And then I'm going to roll it. So the bird seed I'm using has a lot of sunflowers in it. And the bigger pieces don't stick quite as well. So I'm just doing scoops with my hand on top to get some of the smaller pieces. Try to really get it covered all the way with seeds. And that is our little bird feeder. If you want to hang this, you can always add some holes at the top and use some yarn or string to dangle it from a branch. Um, you can nest it in a little branch um, next to a trunk if you don't have any string. Um, if you don't have any trees, uh, we learned about a lot of birds that actually hang out on the ground and nest there. So maybe there's a spot near your home on the ground that you could put this. Um, but this is just a really fun and easy way to invite birds into your yard. And it's something that you can make with simple supplies and bird seed um, anytime you want. So that is all I have for you today. I hope that you are inspired to learn more about birds and get outside. Um, check out the Southeastern Wildlife Expos events this year and even participate in the Great Backyard Bird Count. I hope to see you all again soon. Have a great weekend.